Oh, look at that light. It's like having a little reflector in the room. Good morning. I'm on my third coffee of the day. Apparently that's a thing I'm doing this morning. To be fair, I have got a very busy day ahead of me and we're not gonna mess around this morning. We're gonna be getting stuck straight into it. I have James coming over and we're gonna be filming something in my office. So as you guys would have known, yesterday was the launch of the James Bond No Time To Die film. And so I'm really excited to be sharing with you that today's video is in partnership with Adobe. And we're gonna be getting into Premiere Pro, the software, for the first time. I've never ever used Adobe Premiere Pro before. Many of you will know that I'm a user of Adobe products such as Photoshop and Lightroom. And Adobe UK have set me the challenge of creating my own Bond moment. Now later on in today's video, we're gonna be heading to the Royal Albert Hall for the official Bond premiere. So stay tuned if you wanna join Lids and I as we head over to there. But I think it's fair to say, and you'll all agree with me, that the backbone to any Bond film franchise are the inspirational, clever, special effects that are used in the film. Now, I'm not gonna be doing anything the scale of what is done in those films, but it just shows you the capability of these softwares. Now, lots of my professional friends, as well as some of the people that I look up to in the industry, they all tend to use Adobe Premiere Pro as their preferred software to edit video content. Now, the reason why I haven't made the jump over to Premiere Pro before is because when you change software, there's obviously a new interface, and that means that you need to spend time and you need to be committed and dedicated to putting in the effort to understand and learn this new setup. Fortunately, I'm well aware that there are far more benefits for me to be using Premiere Pro than the existing software that I'm using. And so I'm gonna put some time in, I'm gonna be persistent, and I'm gonna learn and work my way around the new world of Premiere Pro because there are so many functions and features on that software that I currently don't have my hands on and I would love to because ultimately it means in the long run it's going to improve the quality of my content, my workflow, etc, etc. We're going to get busy filming. I'm going to show you a behind the scenes of what we're going to be doing today and then we're going to jump into the software and then I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of what I do and how I edit using the software and we're kind of going to be learning together a little bit because as I say, I'm going to be doing this for the very first time. I'm going to do a little screen recording as I'm editing so you can see what I'm doing and uh, fingers crossed all goes to plan and we get a nice video for Instagram. Well I thought I'd quickly give you a tour of the current setup. This is going to be the location where we're filming today's video and you'll notice that there's a few props that resemble that of James Bond. You've got some bullets, some poker chips, a martini glass. This is actually the Aston Martin DB10 which was purchased for me from the Bond store couple of cards and some binoculars. So they're the props that we're going to be working with today as well as a tuxedo and you'll have noticed that there's some lights around the room and we've got the curtains closed. The biggest reason why we're doing this is because we want to try to control the light and the environment to make sure that there's no change because when you're working on transitions and there's going to be time in between the two you can't really ever rely on natural daylight or sunlight to provide that consistency because of the clouds, because of the way the sun moves. So the more control you have of the light, the easier your job's gonna be. Now I have to be honest, I don't often do this because it takes quite a lot of time to set all this up and also to get it right. It's also a completely new skill set lighting. So it's something that I don't do that often, but in this particular instance, it's gonna make our lives a lot easier. So just to kind of run through the concept before we really get into the editing of this video, the idea is, is that everything I touch turns to Bond. That's the sort of caption, the tagline that we've come up with to go through with this campaign. My outfit's gonna change from casual to tuxedo. I'm then gonna sit down in this environment. We're gonna come into a half length frame. I'm gonna click my fingers as each prop comes into shot. Every time a prop comes into shot, just to add a little bit of a dynamic into the frame, I'm gonna do something with it. So whether we drop the poker chips down and they fall down, olives drop into the martini glass, the car can come flying in from the side, and uh, we're actually gonna have the cards coming out of my pocket. And so it's just different ways of creating a slightly more interesting creative video concept. Now, because we're controlling the light today, I'm able to actually film me sitting down, clicking my fingers in one shot, and actually nothing in this frame will come in apart from the binoculars because at the end, I'm gonna be picking the binoculars up and looking through them as the end of the video. So you won't see the glass, the poker chips, the bullet, cards will come out, but I'll explain that in a second, and the car, it will just be the binoculars. And that's because what we'll do is we'll mask little sections, little cutouts 
of each prop and we'll add those into the shot afterwards in the editing process using masking. And so we'll essentially end up with five layers where we've got me, the car, the chips, the glass and the bullets all laid over each other with little holes so you can see each section happening as I click my fingers. But it's going to make filming it a little bit easier. It'll also make the edit more seamless and that's primarily because we've got control of light in the room. We've got the camera on a tripod filming on the Sony today. Again, just because I can get a bit more control from the footage because I can film in slow motion, which means if I need to speed or slow up the footage, I don't need to worry about it jittering, which is something that you would find on a phone or some other cameras, depending on the frame rate that you decide to film on. And I think that's about it. So the card situation, we wanted to have the cards appear in the pocket of the jacket. And so to achieve that in the easiest way, we're actually going to put them right in the pocket so you can't see them. And when I click my fingers, people are going to expect it to appear somewhere on the shelf because the other props have and nothing appears. And then I'm like, oh, check my pocket. And that's where they were. And that's all I have to say right now. We'll uh, touch base after I finish filming and uh, we'll go through the editing process once we've got this footage loaded up into Adobe Premiere Pro. Right, so what we've done is we've filmed a segment of me coming into the room in a casual outfit. I stood in position, I clicked my fingers, and then James came over, put a couple of poker chips under my feet to mark my feet location, just to give us some kind of reference. I went upstairs, changed into my Sunday vests, come back downstairs, stood on top of the chips, James removed the chips, got back into my click finger position, click the fingers in the suit, position myself into the half length position of the next shot, which is where we'll be able to move the camera a little bit closer because we want to be able to have a little bit more visual on the props that are being used. So yeah, that's where we're at. We're gonna start filming section two. To do this, I need cards in my pocket and we're gonna need you. Can, can we just confirm that if you stand here, there's no shadow in the shot because that's the edge of the shot there. No shadow. No shadow is there. Yeah. So you can press record, come walk around to here, just stand here whilst I'm doing my thing. And then when I get to click six and I look to here, you'll go, I'll freeze. Yeah. Yeah. To make sure that the edge of the binoculars are past this inside line. I'll then finish off the sequence, pick them up. Cool. Yeah. Let's just record and go. I'm going to make it up. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Six. Cool. Okay. Are you ready? So this is what it's looking like at the back of the camera, guys. Right, I'm just gonna get changed out of the tuxedo quickly so I'm a little bit more comfortable filming all of the props being integrated into the video. But hopefully that's gone pretty well. We've had to film it in four sections. Um, so we've got me walking in in casual attire, changing into the tuxedo. We then change frame and I'm half length sitting in position for the props. Then the fourth scene will obviously be the props being integrated, uh, which I'll film in one go, but really that's like five different things being filmed. I've got a little plan of action for each one. So uh, let's see how this goes. But it's okay, okay? You. Yep. Okay. Ready? Nice. You're never going to make that shot. I am. I promise you. Easy. I don't know if the odds are going to survive the amount of attempts it takes me. No. Ready? Come on, be good. James, <laughs> honestly, I promise you, this is the sort of shit I was born to do. Come on, be good. Unbelievable. It hit the 
bush though. Hmm. Nothing wrong with that. You're not going to get that in there and not hit the bush. <laughs> oh Christ alive! So not getting it, getting it in isn't good enough. Come on! So now we need to do the car. So I can put the car here for you. To... Yes. So where do you want it to end? Remember, I'm sitting here like this, aren't I? So we can't have the car come too far. It just needs to end about there. On the car there? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay? Yep. Yeah. And then, so we've done poker chips, bullets. That's it. That's it. They're the three. And now we need to do the binoculars one. No, because you've forgiven them to me. Oh, yeah. In situ. So we did yeah. that one in camera before. That's the a cards wrap. are in my pocket. That's a wrap. So a day has passed and I finished off editing up the final video for the reels that you've just watched the behind the scenes of and I'm very happy with the outcome. I think I actually mentioned earlier on in the video that of course this was my first time using Premiere and so whilst I'm going to be taking you into the software to talk to you about how I went about editing the video and of course sharing with you the final result, I wanted to break this down into a more digestible format. I've broken down the editing process into eight points, which I'm gonna be showcasing to you in small sections because to sit there and watch me do an entire edit would A, take absolutely ages, and B, because I was jumping from the software to YouTube to watch tutorials and how-tos and basically get to grips with it myself, it would just be very confusing. The first thing I did actually when I opened up Adobe Premiere Pro, if you haven't already got the software, or if you have and you haven't done this, why have you not done this? Um, they actually offer a learning function on the software itself. So I watched a few of the tutorials and it just really helped me understand the layout because obviously, how can I explain it? I guess it's like driving a different car for the first time. You know, the indicators are in different places, the headlights are in different places. So it was just kind of like establishing the grounds. Now, these are absolutely customizable. You can change the sizes of these parameters. You can add in faster access to certain editing tools. So you can customize everything to suit you. But I wanted to get to grips with Adobe's like reset preset. <laughs> and so I was basically just watching their tutorials, trying to get a feel for how they do stuff. I did change the short keys, which is fantastic that you can do that, just because I'm quite familiar with the short keys that I know, which would just be simple things like to cut a clip, I just press B on the keyboard, and then obviously that will like splice a clip for me. If I want to delete something, I'll use X. They're just like little shortcuts basically to improve my workflow, and so it was great to be able to stick those straight on, save me not having to learn a load of new short keys throughout the process of understanding all of the other elements that I was trying to learn. The eight sections that I broke down to talk to you through today in today's video are of course loading footage into the software itself, clip selection, music, selecting the format that you want to use, masking, sound design, color grading and of course exporting. So I'm planning on just showing you little clips of each of those sections. Of course, when I'm editing this video, essentially all I'm doing is duplicating that same technique over and over and over again on each clip. Rather than go through the whole thing, we'll just go through each section um, and that will compile the whole video. So you understand basically how it's done. Let's jump into Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm gonna shrink myself down. And so the first thing you want to do is of course, open up Premiere Pro and select yourself a new project that you can title with whatever relevance it has to the video. You then want to go into your finder and grab the files, whether that be through an SD card or in my case, through an external hard drive and drop them into the project folder on the bottom left of the software. Now we have all of those files in the project folder. We can double click on those. It'll open it up into the preview section, which is above the project folder. And we can scrub through using the slider and select the parts of that clip that we want to put into our timeline. Now, I use the short keys I and O. I remember those as in and out. And that just highlights the area of that clip. 
back into the project folder and then I'll grab and drop them straight into the timeline and there we have it. Very simple, very easy. We've imported footage into the software and then dropped it into the timeline ready to be edited. And of course, you will repeat that process with the music that you're gonna be importing and any other sound effects or plugins or presets or whatever else it is that you're looking to add into um, the software itself. Now once the footage is in the timeline and we've selected all of the relevant clips that we want to work with, it's time to add some music to that. Now, I personally had pre-selected a track that I knew I wanted to use for this video. I'm actually signed up to Epidemic Sounds, so I went onto their website, downloaded the relevant song, and dropped it into Adobe Premiere Pro ready to edit up. Now amazingly, I learned that Adobe Premiere Pro actually has an inbuilt system where you can actually preview tracks from Epidemic within the software, which is like unbelievable, amazing. And you'll notice if you cast your eyes to the top of the software, you'll see it says audio. If you click on that and open it up, you'll see that an audio tab appears. Now you can actually see all of the integrated Adobe stock music, which you can preview and audition as you play them. It will layer it over the actual video that you have in your timeline to try and sync it all up together, which is a very convenient function. Um, you'll also notice that if you go into filters, you can actually select tracks. For example, in my case, I'd click Epidemic Sounds and it will bring up all of the tracks on Epidemic. I can then select genre, the tempo of the track, and this just gives me the ability to very quickly select different tracks to see if those fit the kind of desired feel for the video that I'm looking for. It's a very efficient function that I'm gonna really enjoy using on the software, and um, that's something that's gonna up my editing game. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting used to that. And then of course, when you find the clip, again, drag and drop straight into timeline, and then you're good to go. Now if I found an epidemic soundtrack on there, I would then go onto their website, download the actual proper file, and that would be the track that I'd use to export the video with. Now you may notice that all of the video files are on the side, and that's because when I was filming, I had the camera flipped because I wanted to film in a vertical format. But of course the camera doesn't know I'm doing that, so it's loaded it up in a horizontal format. So I don't get a sore neck because I have in the past actually edited videos looking like this because I hadn't spent the time to learn how to rotate uh, the footage. I will then go through, in this case, and make all of my files vertical. And by doing that, I'll go into the effects tab, I'll select the clip and change it by 90 degrees, which will then flip the clip so I have a vertical preview of the clip itself. If you need to change the scale, you can do that by adjusting the scale and size of that to fit the vertical format. Now, I can't talk with experience, but I believe if you were to nest, which is kind of like compress all of those files, you could probably do that in one sweep. But as I'm learning the software, I'll pick up on those little tips as I'm going along. For now, I just went through each individual clip and then just quickly change them, flip them over so they were easy for me to preview and edit. Now, whilst we're talking about kind of framing and formats, I think that this would be a very fitting time to talk to you about a new function that Adobe Premiere Pro have just introduced. It's called dynamic content reformatting. And to try to explain this in a simple form, Let's just say, for example, you have a landscape piece of footage that you want to post onto your Instagram, but you want to post it in a vertical format because that's the sort of preferred upload format for Instagram. What would normally happen when you're editing is you would have to take that video and you would change the format to vertical and then you would have to transform each clip and drag the subject into the center of that vertical video because there will be times, like at the moment I'm sitting in the center of this frame, if you were filming and I was over here, then we would want to have me in the center of the vertical clip and if we'd have just left it without transforming it, you would have just the picture and not my face. It can take a little bit of time because you're having to transform each clip. Now, what this function does is it automatically tracks what it believes to be the right subject for the frame. And so what you're going to be able to achieve is, is a very efficient workflow to repurpose content on lots of channels in different formats. So whether that's square, vertical, horizontal, it will just do it and it will lay those clips out in the most visually appealing manner, which is just 
absolutely game changing that they have technology that gives you the ability to be able to do that stuff because it's just one of those tasks that can be quite slow and boring and actually it can just do it with probably a few clips. So another function that I'm really looking forward to getting to grips with and implementing into my editing process. Now here comes the fun part in this particular Reels video that we're editing today and the technique that we're using is called masking. I've spoke about masking quite a lot on my channel. I'm not gonna go into too much depth but essentially you're layering clips on top of each other and exposing layers underneath using a masking tool. So today what we did was we had the base clip of me sitting down with no props around me and I was clicking my fingers and looking around every click at different areas on the shelves around me. Then we filmed obviously the second section which were the props being put into those locations. We're gonna take that original clip of me sitting there and we're gonna mask behind that layer the props appearing around me. And so to do this, we're going to put each separate clip with each prop and we're gonna put a mask tool onto that clip by selecting areas using a draw tool. Now you can use shape tools, which you'll see are on the software as well. But for the purpose of this video, we wanted to use the draw tool and we drew out the area where we wanted to expose the clip. We then had the ability to be able to play around with the amount of fade and blur that was around the edge to try to make it more seamless. And of course, like with all framing, or at least most of the time anyway, we then had to implement a key frame per frame to ensure that if there were any crossovers of those layers, that we were moving the frame to flow. So for example, where the poker chips were dropped, you'll notice that I'm moving my arm and my shoulders covering over where the poker chips are behind me. So I had to move the keyframes around those poker chips to move with my arm. Otherwise, of course, the poker chips would then overlap and you would see some of the shelf and the chips over my shoulder, which would completely give away the video. And that's not what we want to do. We want to make this look as authentic as possible. We stuck a mask tool on, we then adjusted the keyframes to each frame without going into every single issue you might face when masking. A couple of the problems that we had to make some very minor tweaks on were color, light, and in one instance you'll see, I'll actually show it, somehow the plant had moved where the martini glass, oh I know how, because I chucked the olives and hit it, that's why, I, I moved it didn't I when I chucked the olive. And so the plant had moved, which meant that when we masked it, you had the plant originally in one position, and then after it had been hit, it was in a new position where I finally got the olives into the glass. I needed to use a tool which is in effects called Cross Dissolve. Now Cross Dissolve essentially blends two clips together over a customized period of time. And the reason why this is such a great tool for this purpose is it was able to very slowly change the position of that plan without it being really sharp and noticeable to the audience. Before I casted the eyes of the audience to that area of the frame, I softly blended in the new location of that plan then cut in the clip of the martini glass appearing. And that is just the use of one of the effects that's inbuilt into Adobe Premiere Pro that can be utilized to your benefit. And it gets you out of sticky situations like that one. Now the second change that we made, of course, was just to tweak the light and the color balance of the clips. Because as I mentioned, cameras like to auto white balance. It might be a little brighter outside that gets through the edges of the curtains or through the door, which means you have to make some small light adjustments. And so I went through each clip and just made some very minor changes, just again to try to make those layers be as seamless with one another as possible. So I guess during this edit, masking was like the primary tool that was used to make this video really come to life. It didn't finish there. Once we had our music track in, our clips all masked in and everything nicely blended together, it was time to really take that video to the next level and add some sound design. One of my friends is actually a sound technician and he does the most insane sound designs. I'm just in awe of some of his work. It's absolutely incredible. So I feel a little bit bad and a little bit of a cheat saying that this is sound design. I'm just adding a few sound effects, which is absolutely fine. It's nice and simple, like most of the stuff I do online. It needs to be quick, it needs to be fast, it needs to be engaging, but I feel like it just takes that video to the next level, just gives it a little extra oomph that we need. So again, I went onto Epidemics, went onto their sound effects and downloaded like a finger click, some metal impact in. What else did I download? Some footsteps. 
Um, I actually use the audio of the poker chips falling in camera. I just basically stitched those onto the timeline in the relevant places, which gave a little boost to the video. And then once this has all been complete, I probably next time would put an adjustment layer in to do my color grading and then do my color grading on that adjustment layer. I believe this time from memory, because I haven't got it in front of me, I nested the clip, which meant that I'd basically put all of those clips into one and then I edited on that nest, which meant that I was able to change all of the clips at the same time because I just wanted to do a little bit of a color grade. Now color grading is an area that has never really been my strong point, but I'm really keen to learn. I noticed that there were lots of cool color grading features within Adobe Premiere Pro, such as the HSL secondary sliders. I thought that that was really cool to have that inbuilt in the software. For example, if you wanted to change the color of your coat or you wanted to make it slightly more saturated or brighter or darker, you could use these HSL secondary sliders to do so by picking out the exact color of your top and it will just change the color of your top and not everything else in the video. So a very, very clever tool to be able to utilize. And again, I'm learning and I will continue to learn. And so I'm not completely on top of all of these functions and tools that they offer. I'll continue plucking away and trying to get little nuggets of information that I can share with you guys and hopefully get on top of color grading to a better level within the software because that would be really fantastic to also elevate the quality of my content because there's nothing better than like a really lovely cinematic grade on your content that's completely in your style. Something that we'll be working on, but I just wanted to let you know that that was something that was inbuilt that you can tweak and play around with. And then when all of that is complete, your video is ready for export. Um, it's super easy, top right corner, you just click quick export. It will walk you through the steps of exporting the video anyway. I exported the video on an adaptive high bit rate, but you have low, medium, um, you also have loads of other options as to how you can export your video. I like to export my videos at 1080 as well, just because I find it easier for storing files and I personally think it's adequate enough for uploading onto digital platforms. So I hope you did find this a little bit useful. I tried to put in as much information as possible without going on for too long. But if you do have any questions, please do feel free to write them in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them. Like I said, I'm still learning as well. But it just goes to show how user-friendly these softwares are because I was able to get a video out at the level and standards that I see myself producing for the first time I ever used it. So big thumbs up to Adobe Premiere Pro. Really enjoyed using it and it's actually really exciting to see the scope and the potential within this software where I can personally make improvements on my own work. That's really great to see and uh, it definitely motivates me to uh, keep on learning and keep on working hard and improving my content. But if you want to find out any more information about Adobe Premiere Pro, as always, I'll leave that in the description box below. All that talk of editing, I'm gonna take this video file and stick it into the software now and get busy and uh, finish off my day. The next time I'm gonna be seeing you is when we get ready to head to the James Bond premiere. So I'll catch you very soon. Well, good evening. As I said, we are going to be heading this evening to the James Bond No Time to Die premiere. I'm joined with my very lovely wife. Look at you. Did my own hair. Did you? Yeah. Wow. It looks quite nice, but Alex did my makeup. You do look very, very good. Thanks, babe. Have to so um, you. see Lydia's full attire on her YouTube channel, which will be going out tomorrow evening. But very excited about this evening. It is raining, but fingers crossed by the time we get to London it's a little bit dry just whilst we do the red carpet and then it can rain all it likes because we're going to be stuck inside for a few hours but it is a royal red carpet this evening I know that Kate and William are going to be joining and uh, of course my wife <laughs> <laughs> very smooth you'll see that this evening I opted for a double-breasted cream blazer to go with my trousers which have the traditional tux look and I'm also wearing my Manolo Blahnik shoes. I've got a very lovely car down this evening. So we're gonna sit back, relax and enjoy the comfort of this car. Somebody already is. <laughs> and uh, yeah we'll be seeing you on the red carpet very soon. Well it might have stopped raining.
Well, we're just walking up to the red carpet now. It's been absolutely chaotic so far, but what do you expect at a premiere? Keep moving, please. Thank you. Thanks, well this is officially the busiest red carpet I've ever been on in my life. Look at this. Oh, error. Absolutely unbelievable. We are absolutely live on Facebook and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome to the world premiere of No Time To Die, the 25th Bond movie and his final Bond movie, Mr. Daniel Craig, welcome. Thank you. Well, the show's just about to start. Liz and I are currently in the elevator. Lost. Working our way down to the ground floor of the Royal Albert Hall. It's going to be very fancy. Let's go. for their Royal Highnesses, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall. Mr. Daniel Craig. Hey, well, um, the, the sad thing for you is that they're expecting me to say something. Um, I just want to thank um, your Royal Highnesses for being here this evening, for making this special evening. We've just finished off at the premiere, as you can see, the Royal Abbott Hall has is dissipated, the right words, Mr. Mike, with uh, midwife Mike, by the way, everyone. Enjoy it. I um, loved it. It was actually very emotional at the end. It was. We Almost won't give any spoilers, tears, though. No spoilers. Well worth Absolutely it. awesome. Yeah. Well, it's the morning after the night before, and all I can say is... Ooh, Lummy got in there before me. Are you okay, darling? <laughs> All I was going to say was, what an absolutely fantastic Bond film. That is going to go down in Bond history as one of the greatest. You guys have got um, a real treat in store. Um, there was such a different dynamic, but it kept all of like the traditional things we love about Bond. So I'm not going to say any more. I hope you go and watch it and enjoy it. Um, I'm going to sign off this video because it's just about to be pushed live. Uh, well, not pushed live, but loaded up, ready to push live uh, this evening. So if you do want to find any information out about the Adobe Premiere Pro software, of course, I'll leave that in the description box below. I'll also see if I can find a link to uh, some of the James Bond bits as well. Um, but I hope you're all having a great week and look forward to the weekend ahead. And we'll be seeing you on the next one. Peace. Yeah.